A young resistance fighter from the future travels back in time to try and stop an alien invasion on Earth. Sound cool? Good. Because I'm here to talk about Returner from 2002. Hey guys, thanks for joining me here today. Uh, I really appreciate people who you know check out reviews for like these lesser known films. And Returner is not necessarily unknown or anything like that. I'm not trying to make that claim. But I think a lot of you are probably not familiar with it uh, like I was until I blind bought like an old beat up DVD copy a couple of months ago uh, just because it looked cool. I've been interested in Asian cinema for a good Good, pretty good long time now, even though my knowledge is, is still pretty entry level. The Returner was directed by Takashi Yamazaki, who would later go on to direct Godzilla Minus One, which, as you might know, I'm a big fan of. He's been directing since 1994, and this was one of his earlier films. Godzilla Minus One is definitely the superior film, but, but he had a lot of time to you know, hone his craft. I think that Yamazaki has a lot of heart, because it really comes out in his films from what I've seen so far. And he seems to have a knack for writing interesting characters that you care about. Maybe these are his trademarks. I've only seen two of his films so far, but uh, I definitely plan on watching more. And hopefully we'll see Yamazaki join the, uh, the ranks of elite Japanese directors. Now on paper, this is probably not the most original film. I mean, I get vibes from films like Terminator 2, uh, and of course The Matrix, because this was 2002 after all. And I also get John Woo vibes. And that's not to say that Returner is, you know, like, completely derivative or anything like that. Uh, this is sci-fi action, and it's a whole lot of fun. Flaws and all. Uh, the, you know, there's a ton of CGI used here, and a lot of it is, is poorly dated. Some of it suits the aesthetics of the film and works, at least in my opinion. And uh, some of it literally looks like something from a PlayStation 2 game. The acting is great, though, and, and the storyline focuses basically on three main characters. The lead is Miyamoto, played by Takeshi uh, Kaneshiro. Uh, he's like this badass, pre-John Wick-esque hitman. He's smooth, charming, incredibly skilled, and he's got a personal vendetta with an evil mob boss named Mizoguchi, played by Goro Kishitani. Just as Miyamoto has his chance to finally take out Mizoguchi, a portal opens up, and out of it comes Millie, played by Ann Suzuki, who traveled back in time from the year 2084 uh, to, to try and save humanity from a, an alien race called the Dogdra. She is accidentally shot by Miyamoto, which was enough to, uh, of a distraction for Mizoguchi to escape. This is where you learn a lot about Miyamoto uh, and his ethics, as he takes Millie back to his apartment instead of just leaving her behind. Although when he learns that you know she wasn't hurt because of her armored vest, uh, he, he wants her to leave him alone. Uh, the fact remains, though, uh, he was taking responsibility. Millie tells him her story and asks if he can help her with her mission. And, of course, he isn't buying into her story. And she ends up getting him to help her, but by placing an explosive device on him that, that she can detonate at will. And it isn't out of malice or anything like that. It's sheer desperation. You know, my favorite part of this film is the, the almost buddy cop type chemistry between Millie and Miyamoto. They're both the heroes here, and Millie is your classic underdog. Uh, she's young, she's small, she's not super skilled or super experienced, but she's brave, and she has heart and an iron will. Miyamoto is more of an anti-hero, I'd say. You know, watching him form an attachment for Millie in like kind of a big brother type way will surely warm your heart. And it's Takashi Yamazaki's writing, after all. Uh, and of course, you know, I can't forget to talk about the villain a little more. Mizoguchi is a ruthless bastard and a, a classic 80s, 90s style villain. I mean, he is sadistic and he will kill anyone in his way without a moment's hesitation. And, and he does it here in this film numerous times. The type of villain that you will hate, but damn it, <laughs> you love to watch. And he has played absolutely wonderfully uh, and has every bit as much charisma as the two leads. The $4 million budget is stretched to the max, especially for 2002. Uh, you know, the action is great in kind of a John Woo type way and, you know, over the top at times, almost comic book-esque, but it all fits and it all works. I'm giving Returner a 7 out of 10. The storyline was okay, but the uh, characters were fantastic. Good acting from the leads. Tons of heart. Uh, great action scenes that were at times a little bit held back by the budget and, some, you know, some very dated CGI. That does also work at times. Overall, though, I had a, a lot of fun, and I, I would have loved to see more 
you know, or to have seen more movies with Millie and Miyamoto teaming up together, but obviously that didn't happen. Uh, and most of all, it was very cool to see some of, you know, Takashi Yamazaki's work 20 years before Godzilla Minus Movie. Cheers, guys.